Hi, and welcome to Catrin Figures. I'm your host, Caitlin, and today I have a comic review for you guys. So this is Hexwives issue two, and um, if you haven't already checked out my review for issue one, please do uh, check that out just to catch yourself up with the story. But just a brief synopsis, this is a tale of witches and witch hunters, in which case the witch hunters found a way to control the witches and basically turn them into their uh, Stepford wives. It's basically what's going on here right now. All right, so diving on into the story, we see Isadora and she is diving into her pool until we see an arm reaching out for her. And it is her husband, Aram, which uh, if you'll remember, he is actually a witch hunter and she is a witch. She has no actual knowledge of any of this, but um, you know, living that whole step for life. And it's just such a creepy relationship. Just seeing what he's what he's saying about her, about, I, it's just so phony throughout. And I think that's, I honestly think that that's what the writer's going for here. And even Isadora is thinking like, this is a little, a little much at times, how he's talking about how she's the love of his life and how she's so outstandingly gorgeous. And that anything that she would possibly make for lunch would just be wonderful. You know, because Stepford, you gotta be perfect for a Stepford wife. So she makes some uh, chicken salad sandwiches, which um, he apparently doesn't want. And he walks off and goes to his office to work. And she's not sure if she did something wrong or if he wants anything else. So it's been two hours. So she goes and tries to knock on his door. And he tells her that, she, that he's just been catching up on work and thinking. But it's all good. But he's been a terrible husband. And then he starts crying. <laughs> and you can even tell that she's kind of surprised by this. And he's talking about how his heart is in her hands and so forth. And it's, it's really, really all over the place. But, um... Then they start to have sex, and I gotta tell you, this is probably, probably the most unfortunate sex scene I've ever seen in anything. Um, it's awkward, to say the very least, if you can see her face. She's not enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, then he pulls out. <laughs> and, uh, she said, you weren't in. You know, whatever. He's gonna go shower. It's all good now. So he, he has to go and go golfing because, of course, you can't actually spend time with your wife because she's gotta go do, you know, Stepford wifey things with the other wifeys in town. Because never, never forget, there's still a fire going on outside their neighborhood and it's too dangerous for any of the women folk to leave. So she does, in fact, go to her friend Nadia's home. And uh, Nadia's been trying to stay busy by baking a lot of cakes, clearly. Nadia is another one of these witches who has had all of her memories taken from her. And they're lost. They're unsure of exactly what's going on, and they're trying to channel themselves into these Stepford wife-esque roles, and it's not really working out. But while the two women are actually in the kitchen together talking, there's a spider, and Nadia is going to kill it with a rolling pin. But, um, of course, her husband can't allow her to kill, because that is how a witch's power gets stronger. So he hurries up and rushes in to be the big strong hero as you can see he's panicked and he's there to kill it yeah 
because you can't allow your witch wife to find out that you have uh, hoodwinked her. And um, that's when the two women have a conversation of exactly what's going on throughout the neighborhood, how some of the men patronize their wives, or they treat them like children, or like their kids are crazy, you know? I mean, no one's perfect. No one's family is as perfect as it seems. So, um, continuing on, we get to see another dose of the uh, weird coupling of Aaron and Isadora, which you can see here, the dark panel. What did I do to deserve such a fortune? And uh, as they're going to sleep, it's still kind of odd. And she's once again talking about the scratching in the walls, saying that clearly they must have mice or something, and that she'd be willing to take care of it herself, but no, 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 he's, he's going to have the exterminators out to take care of it. And as he's, as he's asleep that night, she hears the scratching, and she begins to follow it until she realizes that uh, there's a false wall in her home. And when she goes to open it, she sees another witch has been trapped inside that wall. And that is when Isadora is going to find out exactly what's going on. But of course, it's gonna be a lot harder to wake up the rest of the coven throughout the neighborhood and to figure out exactly how to break the spell that's holding them all. So I gotta tell you, I love the artwork that, what is it, Mirica Eldolfo is doing in this. She's also the creator of Unnatural, if you've been checking that out, it is spectacular as well. But I've really, really been enjoying this so far and I'm definitely excited to see where it goes moving forward, especially how is Isadora going to punish all of the witch hunters for what they've done to her and her sisters? Definitely something to look at there because we know in issue one, it was really gory, really bloody. I'm really excited to see what, what the revenge is going to look like there. So as per usual, guys, please do give me a like if you like this video. Comment below and tell me some, tell me whether or not you picked up Hex Wives issue two and whether or not you liked it like I did. Tell me um, what you thought about it. Did you like the art like I did? Do you think that was the uh, most awkward sex scene known to mankind? Because it really was kind of creepy. Kind of put a bad taste in your mouth reading it. But uh Please do check out any of the older videos I have for offer here on Cat Run Figures, or please do subscribe to my channel to uh, check out any of the new stuff I'm putting out. So until next time, I'm your host, Caitlin. Bye.